producers from this point forward after you watch this video you will no longer work with another artist unsigned rapper or singer without a benefit see this is how it's supposed to work if you sell a beat to a record label or someone that has money they pretty much are paying for the right to use the music however they want within reason as long as you're okay with it of course so if there's a contract they basically put the stipulations of how they want to use the music or what they want to use the music for and if you're okay with it, you sign it that's pretty much how business works it's a process now the process with working with artists with no money or that can't give you any benefit or offer you anything it's a little backwards and I'm gonna break down how it is like see when you work with an unsigned artist or an artist that doesn't have anything and you give them your music your music's already done so if you guys are anything like me I spend anywhere from two hours to two weeks on one beat it just depends on how dynamic it is and you know the complexity of it or whatever and so you know at least two hours so sometimes I'll just sit on the beat for a few weeks and just, you know, the kick, I can't figure out how to pocket the kick. And so, you know, I'll sit on it for a couple weeks and, you know, I'll spend hours and hours trying to figure out certain things. And I love these beats and I think they're dope and I have creative ideas on how I think an artist should be on here or be on there. And I'm totally willing to work with whoever. However, you know, I just, you know, like one thing about a producer, hearing someone on your music is like the dopest thing ever. Like it doesn't matter if you're used to making a hundred thousand dollars per beat and you hear some unsigned artist that's dope on you. It just it's just dope. It's just a dope feeling. That's just what you do it for. And we love music so much that to get that feeling every single time, we'll do it for free. You know, and like we'll put the work in and we'll do it for free. And like this is what happens when you interact with an artist, especially online or with some artist who feels like he's so dope and he's going to be the next next big thing. He feels like his confidence gives him a sense of entitlement to where you need him more than he needs you. And so he'll give you he'll give you this talk. He don't know what he's talking about. He'll say, yo, I'm trying to work on this mixtape. I'm trying. You don't care. You just care. Just, yo, I just want to hear someone on my music. I just want to work with good people. And so we give people our work. Now, let's just say. If you give an artist 10 beats or say if you give him five beats and you spend a minimum of two hours on each beat, you've already put in 10 hours of work, already given him 10 hours of work. And let's just say if you spent a month on five beats, you've already given him a work, a month of work, of sacrifice, of dedication. You've probably got off of work and was supposed to go to work in a couple hours and you stayed up making these beats or you probably invested money into buying this keyboard or buying these plugins to make this music and then you give it to this artist only for this artist to take your music not like any and ask you to send more so what am i sending more for for what benefit do i get out of that and that's what you guys need to start demanding and that's what i'm going to start demanding because Yo, I've worked, like, my work ethic is crazy, man. Like, if I work with an artist, I'm dedicated to that artist, pause. Like, you know, I'll spend months, I have spent months and months working with one artist trying to get place, music placed on just a mixtape. And I'll send that artist 50, 60, 70, 100 beats over a span of, like, weeks or a month. Only for that artist to use two of the beats and tell me to send more. So then, I'm so excited and i take it as a challenge that i want to get music placed on this that i'll actually go back and do it and i know a lot of producers out there are going through the same thing and there has to be a benefit like there has to be some type of benefit you have to be able to give some type of creative input because when we make these beats when we make this music we have some input on what we see on these on these songs like we we have some ideas so and the artists don't even want to hear the suggestions you know and so these artists don't use these beats not because your music is whack and a lot of times you will leave the situation feeling like dang I'm not dope enough so I need to go work harder when the artist hasn't put in any work they're just hella lazy and they're probably not putting the work in that you're putting into it or their mind they just can't move creatively and they can't come up with the ideas that they should and I remember hearing an interview with Swiss Beats and he was talking about how he did the song with T.I. to bring him out, and that's which was one of T.I.'s biggest songs to, to date. And he was talking about how when he first played the beat for T.I., he didn't like it. You know, he, he hated the beat. And Swiss Beats pretty much just like 
asked him, like, begged him to just do a song to it. So T.I. did a song to it. He didn't really like it. It ended up being one of his biggest songs. You know what I'm saying? And even you hear these stories all the time of these artists who say that the, their songs, that their biggest songs are the songs that they like the least. And that's usually the case. And so these artists, they listen to these beats and they think they know what they need. They think they know what they want. And they think that they have the right to have creative control over their project when they're really only good to write lyrics and they're really only good to perform. And a lot of these artists don't know what the hell they need and they don't know what the hell they want. And that's where the producer should come in. The producer, you're part of you, it should be, you're a big part of the collaboration. It's a 50-50 split. So you should be able to give just as much input as the artist. No, it doesn't work. I work 10 hours. I give you your beats. Oh, you do whatever you want. If you're paying me, yes, you can do that. But if not, you have the right to give creative input. You have the right to ask an artist to do a song that they may not want to do because ultimately it may end up being one of their best songs. So um, a lot of these artists get signed on record labels and the labels determine whether this artist is good enough to have creative control. And believe it or not, most of these guys you see on TV, they don't even have creative control. They don't pick their own beats because they don't know what's best for them. You know what I'm saying? And so producers, I just feel like that's just what we should do, man. Like the way I grew up, man, listening to music, all of my favorite artists have their own producers. They have their own sound. Like listen to Drake. Drake and 40 and Boy Wonder sound stupid right now. DJ Mustard and, and YG killing right now. Like the people who have the most long term success musically usually have a sound and usually have a producer. But all these producers. I mean, all these artists, they don't want to work with a producer. They're not patient. They don't want to wait for a beat. They don't want a producer to give suggestions to input. They just want a beat right now because they're so used to just ripping beats off the internet and using them for their mixtapes. And then when you ask these producers or these artists where they got the, the music from, they're like, oh, I don't even know. I just took it from somebody on, on the internet. And they shoot videos to them. They do shoots. They post them on Instagram. And they don't even hit the producer up. And the irony of all that is a producer is the most valuable part in the whole process. And we don't even realize it. It's because we don't speak up. It's because we're so excited that we compromise all our mor morals and values for the sake of just getting someone on our song, if we even have morals and values. And so there's so much that I want to say. And... The way that I make videos, man, it's, it's nothing scripted. I don't write anything down. I just think about it and it just comes out. You know what I'm saying? And so, yo, I really, really want to help a lot of producers. You know, I don't want to listen to music more than I want to help you to create music for the people that need to listen to it, to listen to it. So I'm going to be starting a Facebook group pretty soon. Uh, if you got any questions, hit me up about that. Um, to where I'm really going to start developing and helping people. But also within that, I'm going to stop helping people without benefit. So I'm going to need people to start helping me as well. You feel me? Like, because I'm doing all this for what? People don't even comment on my videos. People don't even subscribe. I get messages on Facebook. And people ask me to listen to music. Don't even like my Facebook page. Like, this world is like, we don't understand how it works. Like, it's not a favor for a favor. It's you do something for someone if you want to. You know, like, don't put someone under pressure to do something because you... I'm not going to like your picture because you like my picture. Like my picture because it's dope. You know what I'm saying? And if you're dope, I like your picture. But don't... You don't see me forcing... I never ask people to listen to my stuff or watch my videos. I just post them. And if you support me, support me. But don't expect me to support me because you... Don't expect me to support you because you supported me. No, that's not that's not I don't that's not how it works. Cause I'm just gonna do it because you asked me to, not because I want to. So um ask questions about the Facebook group is coming soon. Um like and subscribe, you feel me? And more videos coming soon.